in this section of the tutorial, we are going to create our inventory. Before we get started on the actual coding, I would like to demonstrate the features that we are going to implement for our inventory. As you can see down here, our inventory will consist of a number of bags. In our case, I have created five bags for my inventory, but you can of course add less or add more if, if it fits your game better. So the first button here is a bag button as well, as, as all these are, but the first one has a bag equipped as you can see on the icon, so I can click that one to open up a bag. The other ones doesn't have a bag equipped right now, but we can actually equip a bag by adding a bag to the inventory. And this bag can be equipped in two ways. We can click on the bag and then click on the button we would like to equip the bag on. Or we can just simply right click on the bag to equip the bag in our game. And as you can see here, there are different sizes of bags. Um, this is like a 16 slot and this is an, and, uh, an 8 slot. And the default one I've put as a 20 slot. So we have different kinds of items. We have non-stackable items that will be placed next to each other like this. And we have stackable items that will be stacked in a number before they actually create a new stack. As you can see here, these apples here are stackable in five. So every time I have five apples, they will be stacked up until five. And then when I have five in a stack, the next one will be placed somewhere in the inventory. Um, I can use these apples as potions at the moment. This is just for debugging and showing you how it works. So if I reduce my health to 80, I can actually right click on an apple to get my health back. So these apples here are usable, which means that I can put them on my action bar here because it's very important that I'll be able to actually open up my inventory. Uh, I would be able to use my items out here instead of being having to open up my inventory every time I need to use an item. For example, if I'm, I'm fighting a monster, I would like to take an item very fast. So it doesn't make sense for me to open up the inventory and find that item and click it because I might be dead before I do that. So I can actually pick up my apple and first mouse click and then place it down here on my action bar. And as you can see, the number of apples corresponds with the number of apples in the inventory. So now I can press the free button to use that item. And as you can see, the item is also used out here in the inventory when I do that. And if I gain more apples, it will also be updated out here. So the number here corresponds to number, the total number in the inventory. Uh, there are lots of small features that goes into this inventory. Um, I can't remember all of them right now, but we will be implementing all of them, of course. You can see here, I have some uh, apples in the, what is this, the 8 slot back here. And I can actually dequip a bag by holding shift down and clicking on it, and then placing the bag somewhere in another bag in, in my, in my uh, inventory. So if there's enough space, it will actually rearrange the items from that bag into other places in the inventory. I can also delete stuff um, by taking an item and then clicking somewhere in my in my game, then the items will disappear. And you can see I can take five apples and delete them, and then it's only 15 here. Of course, I think we need some error uh, warning message. If I do like this, it should ask me if I really want to delete that, but haven't implemented that yet, but we will do that at some point. And then I can take the last one and put it there, and I can re-equip it by right-clicking, as you can see. Um, and of course, we can also swap items in the inventory by picking them up and then clicking somewhere else. So we can move them around in the inventory to wherever we, we want them. So the first thing we have to do before we get started is to bring in the inventory sprites. So if you haven't done that already, then please take the inventory sprites from the RPG asset folder and bring them into the project because we will be using a lot of these sprites throughout this section. So the first thing we have to do is to understand how our inventory will be built up. First of all, on the on the top level, we will have our inventory. So we can actually go to our canvas here and right click, select UI and create an image and call this image inventory. So this is the most outer layer. Under our inventory, we have something called a bag and we will have four, uh, no, five bags in all. And under each bag, we have a number of slots. So UI, image, slot. And this is also the way our scripts are going to work. We're going to have a slot script, we're going to have a bag script, and we are going to have an inventory script. So our inventory will not, ha not have an image itself. So select your inventory, and then just remove the image script, like so. And right now, you can just hide the 
back and hide the image here because we just need to focus on the inventory for a moment um, the inventory needs to encapsulate the area which the inventory will be in so you can actually put it up in the top right corner and then pull all the way down so it's almost at the bottom and then move it all the way over almost over to your action buttons this is the area I would like the inventory to be in of course we'll have to adjust this as we change the UI around but for now I think this is a good good uh, good fit so we can put in our our bags here but later when we have our bags of course we can adjust this so this is just the start so under our inventory we have our bag so now we can show that image so the bag needs a background and there's something called background bag here inside the inventory folder we need to use that on our bag so this is going to be the background of all, all, the, all the images so this needs to contain a number of slots and it needs to resize based on the number of slots it has inside it so we might as well right now go to our slot and we need to show the image and then we need an empty slot here to drag onto that sprite and as you can see this is way too large but don't worry our um, size will be scaled down in a moment um, we can just take it right now and scale it just make it a decent size our parents of the slot will actually decide the size at some point just yeah scale it down like so just just a decent size so now we have one slot underneath our our back so just leave the slot for now and click back on the back so first of all we need a grid layout group on our back so make sure you have selected the back click add component right grid and see there's something called a grid layout group and this can be used for putting in the slots and of course yeah the size changes because we need to change the signal the cell size so our scaling before just it didn't do anything actually so um, I am going to put in the numbers that I'm using but you don't need to use the same numbers if you want your slots to be another size of course but this is what I've played around with and what I think fits so lift and right and top and bottom the padding in all those directions, I would like, or all those sides, so to say, uh, I would like to be three pixels. So the cell size is 23 times 23. You can already see the slot has a decent size now. And the spacing between them, I've put as two and two. And this is all from playing around with a full uh, bag of slots so that I could see what looked best in my eyes, though. So the start corner of this. Well, I would like the start corner to be lower right. The start axis is horizontal. Child alignment, that is from the middle center. And constraints, I would like the column count to be four. There's four on each column. So when we have more bags, I would like them to align um, in the top left corner. So you need to have your bag selected and select top left here so that the pivot should be and, and then sorry the pivot should be put at zero and zero so now the pivot point is, is up there which means that uh, the next bag will be aligned on top of it right there if we don't put the pivot point correctly they'll be aligned weirdly when we we start adding them and um, we can try to change the pivot just to test it later when we add more bags but now we have our slots and our bag is set up with the right grid as you can see the size of the bag is, is very wrong um, so actually select the bag here and add component and add a content size fitter like so so the content size fitter needs to be set as minimum size and minimum size so now you can see that because we put that it should be 4 this is the minimum width of it right the horizontal fit is minimum 4 so if I would duplicate this duplicate and duplicate and duplicate then I have 4 slot back and I would like to have a little more so just select all of them right click and duplicate and do it one more time and let's just do a 20 slot back that's a little too much actually maybe 20 slots a little too much let's remove four of them let's just go with the 16 slot it's fine so this is our 16 slot bag so when we 
have done all this and everything is set up correctly, um, we are going to write how many slots we need in a bag from the script. So basically, we're not going to have prefab for all the bags. We're going to have one prefab for a bag. And from the script, we're going to add the correct amount of slots. So just for now, um, this is just uh, this we're doing here is just for testing and making sure that everything works before we create them from the script. So if we select our bag, right click and duplicate it, you'll see that it's not aligned correctly. We would have to go into our game and align them by ourselves like this to make sure that they have the right position. And we don't want that. We would like everything to be aligned correctly. So if we just place this one out of place so we can see what happens when we do it correctly. We will have to select our inventory because our inventory is the parent of all bags. So it needs to arrange the bags correctly. So select the inventory, click add component and find a, a grid layout group. So our grid layout group is going to place these correctly. And my values are minus 16 on the right padding right now. Maybe we're going to adjust this because this might have another size or something than when I tested earlier, but let's see how it looks. Um, the cell size is 103 times 103 apparently. And the spacing minus 20. And the start corner is a lower right. And start axis is horizontal, giant alignment is lower right and our constraint is a fixed column count of 2 so I'm not sure why I would have minus 20 and minus 16 just what I wrote down so just put this 0 maybe the right um, and the spacing maybe put it to plus 20 like that it's maybe a little too much what spacing we want you can just take the X and drag it. I think this looks fine. So mine is my spacing is five. So th this all depends on the size of the actual inventory around it. Um, so I'm not happy with the fact that my inventory over here is, or my bag over here is all all the way on the edge. So the lift needs to be. Oh, sorry, not the lift. Of course, the right needs to be changed a little. So I can just put that in ten or something. I think that fits well, or maybe C5, 5. So my spacing is 5 and my right is 5. Maybe you have some other numbers based on the size or something. Um, but yeah, these numbers work for me. And also the inventory's pivot point, I've put it as 0 and 0 here as well. So let's try, if we have these bags and we duplicate them, and duplicate, you'll see that we just add extra bags and we have 5 all in all just do like that okay so you can see they're very too close here on top of each other so we will have to select the inventory and then we need to add some spacing between them let's see here put it at five as well so the top spacing is also five and if you're wondering what happens if one of the bags has a different amount of slots let's say our bag number what is this two if we remove four of the slots you'll see that it just shrinks and there's just going to be a space. So the next one will always start up here. Um, so they are aligned all the time. Um, however, there is one problem though. We need to figure out what the maximum size of bags are because we cannot change the cell size during our, or we could, but I'm not good doing that. We, we're not changing the cell size during our equipment and the equipment of our bags. So it's not something I've planned for, but um, the easiest fix is as you can see here, if I add four more slots, it's fine. But if I add four more, the cell size is not changed. Um, I mean, like the inventory cell size here for Y is not changed so that they, they, they those will fit. And the spacing between them is not, is not changed. So what you need to do is to make a bag as big as you would like in your game. In our case, it's... Um, is 20 in my case at least 20 is the is the largest number I would like to put in the game and with that done you will need to select your inventory and then you'll have to change the spacing so that there's enough space between the bags when the 20 slot bag is there and then of course you also need to make sure the top bag right there 
with 20 slots can be seen in the screen and now you can see with 20 slots kind of large so select your inventory and you can drag it a little down so you can see it so now it would be possible to have five 20 slot bags without any problem you can see if we take bag one and change it to a 20 slot there's still space between the two of them so for now I, I'm not going to do a lot of complicated things to change the bags uh, position and everything because I would like unity to drive all that so this is basically how I would like to put my bags. so if they would all be 16 slots instead it would look like this so with a little more space in between them right like so but I'm I'm fine with the fact that there's a little bigger gap between them if you're not then you can write some code to adjust the spacing based on the back that is below it or something so that is the base of our inventory in the next video we will try to add the back bar so that we can open and close these bags individually by clicking the back bar so thanks for watching Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.